Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 18. In this video, we learn one very very important theorem, Natural Embedding Theorem. Let us see the statement. If capital N is a normed linear space with second conjugate, with second conjugate N double star, then there is a natural embedding of N into n double star the same statement can be written like this also this one is known as elaborated statement in detailed statement capital n be a normed linear space then each vector x belongs to capital n induces a functional fx of n double star defined by fx of f is equals to f of x for all f belongs to n star such that norm fx is equals to norm x for all x belongs to capital N. Further, the mapping pi maps capital N into N double star defined by pi of x is equals to fx is isometric isomorphism of capital N into N double star. Let us prove this statement. In the previous lecture, we learned about isometric isomorphism. Let us prove the statement now. Let capital N be a normed linear space. Capital N be a normed linear space. Right? For each, for each, X belongs to capital N. Define, for each, X belongs to capital N. Define Fx, define Fx on N double star as on n double star as fx of f is equals to you see i'm sorry fx fx of f is equals to f of x for all x belongs to n star this is the definition of fx remember that Throughout this theorem, we use the same definition. First, we shall show that fx is a functional on n double star. First, we show that, first we show that this fx is a functional, this fx is a functional on n double star. It means, we show that this fx is linear and linear transformation and continuous. So the first side heading fx is linear. fx is linear. First we show that it is a linear transformation. To prove that it is a linear transformation, let us take two elements small f comma g belongs to n star or any two arbitrary functions. They are any two arbitrary functions and alpha comma beta are any two scalars means belongs to real numbers f comma g belongs to n star and alpha comma beta are any two scalars now consider now consider fx of alpha f plus beta g by the definition of fx, we define fx like this. fx of f is equals to f of x. So by applying the same definition, it can be written as, it can be written as alpha f plus beta g of x. Alpha f plus beta g of x. It can be written as alpha f of x plus beta g of x alpha comma beta are scalars it can be written as alpha into f of x plus beta into g of x alpha into f of x plus beta into g of x again what is this f of x what is this f of x alpha capital fx of x or capital fx of f plus beta fx of g fx of g therefore we prove that 
एफ एक्स ऑफ आलफा एफ प्लस बीटा जी इज ईक्वल टू आलफा एफ एक्स ऑफ एफ प्लस बीटा एफ एक्स ऑफ जी दिस कंडीशन शोशस एफ एक्स इज ए लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एफ एक्स इज ए लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वी नो दैट द स्टैंडर्ड डेफिनेशन ऑफ लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टी ऑफ ए आलफा प्लस बी बीटा इज ईक्वल टू ए इंटू टी ऑफ आलफा प्लस बी इंटू टी ऑफ बीटा द सेम कंडीशन वी प्रूव हियर इन टर्म्स ऑफ एफ एक्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ एफ एक्स देर फॉर एफ एक्स इज ए लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नेक्स्ट आई एम गोइंग टू प्रूव एफ एक्स इज बाउंडेड नेक्स्ट साइड हेडिंग एफ एक्स इज बाउंडेड एफ एक्स इज बाउंडेड सो राइट वी नो द डेफिनेशन ऑफ नॉर्म एफ एक्स वी नो दट वी नो दट नॉर्म एफ एक्स इज ईक्वल्स टू नॉर्म एफ एक्स इज ईक्वल्स टू सुप्रीम ऑफ मॉड एफ एक्स ऑफ एफ सच दट नॉर्म एफ लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू वन दिस इज द नॉर्म ऑफ द लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नॉर्म ऑफ द लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन विच इज ईक्वल्स टू सुप्रीम ऑफ मॉड एफ ऑफ एक्स बाय द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एफ एक्स मॉड एफ ऑफ एक्स सच दट नॉर्म एफ लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू वन विच इज लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू सुप्रीम ऑफ नॉर्म एफ इन टू नॉर्म एक्स सच दट नॉर्म एफ लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू वन अगैन नॉर्म एफ इज लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू वन दिस इन ईक्वालिटी इज लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू नॉर्म एक्स दिस इन ईक्वालिटी इज लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू नॉर्म एक्स देर फोर वी प्रूव दट नॉर्म एफ एक्स इज लेस देन आर ईक्वल्स टू नॉर्म एक्स let it be equation number 1 and remember this equation norm fx is less than or equals to norm fx is less than or equals to norm x and it is equation 1 this condition implies as this condition implies as fx is bounded fx is bounded every bounded linear transformation is continuous therefore fx is continuous what it means what it means एफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूस लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूस लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑन कैपिटल एन स्टार दिस शोशस दिस शोशस एफ एक्स इज ए फंक्शनल एफ एक्स इज ए फंक्शनल ऑन एन डबल स्टार आर कॉन्जुगेट सेकेंड कॉन्जुगेट स्पेस ऑफ एन सो एफ एक्स इज ए फंक्शनल ऑन एन डबल स्टार now we can prove that or now we have to prove that now we have to prove that now we have to prove that norm fx is equals to norm x norm fx is equals to norm x remember this equation 1 in equation 1 we prove that norm fx less than or equals to norm x so to prove that norm fx is equals to norm x it is equivalent to prove that it is equivalent to prove that norm x less than or equals to norm fx if this condition holds by previous condition norm fx less than or equals to norm x then we combining both the conditions we get the required this result so right now now let us take x be any non zero vector let us take x is any non zero vector any non zero vector then by han banach theorem then by han banach theorem by applying the han banach theorem here han banach theorem there exists a functional there exists a functional f not that belongs to n star f not that belongs to n star such that such that f not of x is equals to norm x and norm f not is equals to 1 norm f not is equals to 1 so applying here here f x of f not is equals to f not of x f x of f not of x is equals to f not of x now norm x is equals to norm f x of norm fx of f not because 
this is equals to norm x this is equals to norm x so mod fx of f0 which is less than or equals to norm fx into norm f0 and again norm f0 is equals to 1 so this is less than or equals to norm fx therefore we show that norm x is less than or equals to norm fx let it be equation number 2 equation number 2 what is equation 1 what is equation 1 norm fx is less than or equals to norm x this is equation 1 so from equation 1 and 2 from equations 1 and 2 from equations 1 and 2 we conclude that norm fx is equals to norm x norm fx is equals to norm x let it be equation number 3 so further further here observe that it is a non-zero vector non-zero vector here x is a non-zero vector further whenever x equal to 0 what happens norm f0 is equals to norm 0 it is equals to 0 it means it means norm fx is equals to 0 if x is equals to 0 norm fx is equals to 0 if x equals to 0 so remember that norm fx is equals to 0 if x equal to 0 so right up to this part we prove a functional fx satisfying all the required conditions of the theorem now finally we show that finally we show that finally we show that finally we show that the mapping pi maps capital n into n double star second conjugate space defined by defined by pi of x is equals to capital fx is an isometric isomorphism an isometric isomorphism an isometric isomorphism is nothing but a continuous linear transformation which is 1 1 a linear transformation which is 1 1 not continuous a linear transformation which is 1 1 so isometric isomorphism means you have to show that it is a linear transformation as well as it is 1 1 also so right we are going to prove that so remember that here the function is defined like this pi of x is equals to fx pi of x is equals to fx so we have to show that pi is both 1 1 and linear transformation our aim is to show that our aim is to show that pi is both 1 1 and linear transformation so right the first one the first one pi is linear pi is linear so to prove that pi is linear we use two different conditions by the definition of linear transformation t of alpha plus beta is equals to t of alpha plus t of beta and t of a alpha is equals to a into t of alpha we use these two conditions to prove that our pi is linear so let us take any two vectors in n x comma y belongs to capital n now f x plus y of f is equals to by definition of f x f of x plus y and f is a linear transformation you can write f of x plus f of y since f is linear small f is linear transformation so f of x plus f of y f of x can be written as f x of f f of y can be written as f y of f y of f so this is nothing but f x plus f y of f from this we conclude that therefore we conclude that f x plus y is equals to f x plus f y this is the first condition like this like this t of alpha plus beta is equals to t of alpha plus t of beta now consider any scalar for any scalar alpha for any scalar alpha consider consider f alpha x f alpha x of f this can be written as f of alpha x this can be written as alpha into f of x this can be written as 
alpha into f x of f. Therefore, we can we conclude that f alpha x is equals to alpha f x. This is the second condition. This is nothing but like this second transformation. T of a alpha is equals to a into T of alpha. So here here f x plus y is equals to here f x plus y is equals to f x plus f y means means pi of x plus y is equals to pi of x plus pi of y and here and here f alpha x is equals to alpha f of x means pi of alpha x is equals to alpha into pi of x alpha into pi of x from these two conditions from these two conditions 1 and 2 from these two conditions we conclude that pi is linear we conclude that pi is linear therefore pi is a linear transformation next you have to show that pi is 1 1 to prove that pi is 1 1 to prove that pi is 1 1 to prove that pi is 1 1 again let us take two elements let us take two elements x comma y they belongs to capital n and suppose and suppose you assume that pi of x is equals to pi of y if pi of x is equals to pi of y then pi of x minus pi of y is equals to 0 which implies as pi of x minus y is equals to 0 which implies as x minus y is equals to 0 x minus y is equals to 0 which implies as x equal to y x equal to y therefore we assume that therefore we assume that we assume that pi of x is equals to pi of y and we prove that x equal to y we prove that x equals to y this shows us pi is 1 1 this so this shows us pi is 1 1 therefore pi is 1 1 further we calculate one thing further further pi of or norm pi of x minus y is equals to norm pi of x minus pi of y which is equals to norm f x minus f y which is equals to norm f x minus y which is equals to norm x minus y why because why because norm f x is equals to norm x norm f x is equals to norm x so norm f x minus y is equals to norm x minus y therefore norm pi of x minus y is equals to norm x minus y hence hence pi maps capital n into n double star is 1 1 and linear transformation and also preserves the mapping and also norm pi of x minus y is equals to norm x minus y hence from this from this function pi we conclude that from this function pi we conclude that every each vector for each vector x belongs to capital n in uses a functional fx of n double star of n double star such that norm fx is equals to norm x is an isometric is induces an isometric isomorphism pi an isometric isomorphism therefore we conclude that capital n is isometric isomorphism to n double star n double star so remember that this completes the proof of the theorem hence proved keep learning wish you all the best